Welcome back everyone, Mariah Monetize here and in today's video we are going over the price of Bitcoin. Hope you're enjoying my new mini mic here. This thing is such a vibe. So hopefully the audio gets a little bit better and you're able to hear me just a little bit clearer. So today we're going to be going over the price of Bitcoin. We're going to be talking about some correlation that happened with the S&P 500 open this morning. I'm also going to be reflecting back on 2017 going to be looking at the end of the bull run and see if we can make any comparisons between that period of time, you know, basically once Bitcoin hit 20,000 and like the three months after that and comparing it to like Bitcoin's previous high of approximately 64,000 and the three month approximate period of time that has taken place after that. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and see exactly when Bitcoin hit that all time high and how long it has been since then. So this 64 range happened let's see april let's see it was like april like 12th approximately so may june july 12th well, actually it's been three and a half months since bitcoin has an all-time high three and a half months that's a long time it doesn't actually feel like it's been that long but it's clearly been that long so daily chart here on bitcoin it's approximately 4 28 p.m the stock market is about to close bitcoin sitting at thirty eight thousand one hundred and nine dollars the high of today has been thirty eight thousand seven hundred and seventy nine the high of yesterday was 40,581. As you can see here, Bitcoin was rejected by this moving average. No coincidences there. So I still think that Bitcoin has a few more days of upside. It saw, you know, the resistance here at this moving average. So I'd be anticipating some uh, more resistance at that moving average. You know, this 50 DMA was the first big one to get over. And now we have two more moving averages to get over to see if Bitcoin can continue to the upside. Let's go and take a look here at the 12 hour chart on Bitcoin. 12 hour chart looking good, also getting rejected by that moving average. Um, after this nine candle, I would have anticipated a one to four candle correction and then more room to the upside, but we didn't see that. We just saw straight continuation. So um, nice price action there. Let's look at the four hour chart here on Bitcoin. Four hour chart looking nice and it has, as it has pulled back, it had a, a five candle correction, and then it's continued to the upside. You know, this four hour chart here is looking kind of weak in my opinion. So I would wanna see this green two start trading above the green one. The high of this green one is 38,312. We're really close. So if Bitcoin could start trading above that, that'd be some really nice bullish action. Um, just some weakness here after this correction. We don't wanna see Bitcoin making a lower low. So. We want to see Bitcoin hold the low of this particular candle, which is $36,386. Let's go and look at the one hour chart here on Bitcoin. So I told you after looking at the four hour chart, I, you know, a, a little bit of concern there. And after looking at this one hour chart, definitely some concern here. Um, we have made a lower high, uh, but the good news here is that Bitcoin has made a higher low. So if Bitcoin can go above the high of this particular candle right here, 38,779 and make a higher high on the one hour chart, that would be very promising. Five minute chart here on Bitcoin, trading a little bit sideways, but um, kind of headed towards the upside, making some higher highs, um, but also a lower uh, low right here. So something to be aware of. So I wanted to talk about uh, the market open at about nine or at 9.30 a.m. this morning. So today is the 27th. So right over here, um, this right here is 9.30. So what we saw, which is something you might see frequently when it comes to the correlation, it's like a 15 minute delay. So Bitcoin was trending upwards. And then you could see here at 9.45, 15 minutes into the market open, Bitcoin started trending downwards and, you know, didn't really do much during market hours today. And let's go ahead and take a look at traditional markets. Let's look at majors here, SPY sitting at 439. And um, you could see here that, you know, basically the market opened down this morning. Um, let's go ahead. This is particularly SPY right here. Let's look at it from a percentage perspective. So from the high of yesterday, it was down 1.13% today. And then the reversal started happening at about 1.30. So then 1.30, there was a little bit of recovery and um, SPY started showing some strength after that. But you can kind of see that, you know, during market hours, Bitcoin was definitely correlating with SPY. So something to keep in mind there. 
Also, a friendly reminder, if you are looking to add to your cryptocurrency to get some free cryptocurrency by signing up with Coinbase, Gemini, or Celsius, and now Nexo, you can earn between $10 and $40 of a free bonus. So make sure to check out my links down below. I'm also doing 30-minute calls. Uh, you can ask me anything you want. The cost for those calls is $75, so you can also check out the calendar for that as well in the links down below in my description. So this right here is a daily chart on Bitcoin, okay? Top chart is current market, okay? This is the top that we saw here um, in 2021. What you have here on the bottom chart is the daily chart from 2017 when Bitcoin hit $20,000. What I was looking for when I was trying to see a top on Bitcoin, and this is one of the main reasons why I think that we could still make new all-time highs this year. I've been very bearish recently, but I kept on saying how I thought Bitcoin was going to somehow bottom out in July or August, maybe September, and that it was probably going to be in the low 20,000s. We're not out of the woods yet, but it's looking less likely than it was a few weeks ago, right? So as you could see here, in 2017, Bitcoin had this parabolic move to the upside. And when I say parabolic, I mean from November 17th to about December 17th, which was a top and I'm just, you know, doing an estimate here, about 176% move on Bitcoin. So I was looking for some similar price action when it came to Bitcoin topping for this particular market cycle. The market topped about April 14th. Okay, let's go back to uh, March 14th here. The bottom of this candle, the top of this one over here, it's like a 25% increase, okay? Not quite a parabolic move. So when you look at the price action leading up to the all-time high, it looks incredibly different compared to the 2017 move. Okay, let's take a look here at um, the price action when it comes to uh, the bottom. Okay, so let's see, right over here, when Bitcoin had that low of uh, about $28,000, I want to know how many days it came after reaching the top. So from April 14th to, um, let's see here, mid-June, that was approximately, let's see, May, about two months, okay? And um, <clears throat> so in 2017, from the high to the low that happened, um, approximately two months after Bitcoin uh, started falling was a 66% decrease in the price of Bitcoin. Let's compare it to this year and about two months after, which was April, that would have been mid-June, so right over about in this range, a 53% decline. So two very similar declines. So we've had similar price action after the top, but the price action leading up to it has been quite different. So it's been about three and a half months since Bitcoin hit a top. Let's see where Bitcoin was at about three and a half months after hitting the high of 2017. That would put us at January, February, March, end of March. So about over here. At the end of March, Bitcoin had almost done a double bottom, which is interesting because we almost saw a double bottom because you can see here um, in this chart. So February, like around February 6th, Bitcoin hit um, about 6,000 and then it hit very similar price range um, in the beginning of April. And so what we can compare over here is similar price action. So there was that bottom hit um, around June 20, 22nd or so and then almost a double bottom that hit about a month later. So in this case, the first one came in uh, early February and the second came uh, two months later um, instead of one month later in early April. So what I wanna do next is I want to look at the low that we have seen in 2021 and uh, how much we have recovered since then. So let's see here, we have recovered approximately 42%, I would say 42%. And then if you take about the bottom over here and you go to the high of this candle in uh, 2018, 
about a 52. So very similar percentage gains um, from those two. In 20, 2018, it happened over a longer period of time versus it was a much shorter period of time uh, in this top chart. So as you can see here back in 2017, um, Bitcoin saw resistance, that final resistance at this moving average right here. The 200 DMA. All right, so there's a lot of resistance right there. And um, I would say probably want to keep a close eye on that same 50 DMA um, on the current market <coughs> In the current market conditions to see if Bitcoin also finds resistance there. And you can see once it met resistance, it continued to stay below that 200 DMA back um, through 2018 and 2019. And here's what's, what's interesting, okay? So once Bitcoin finally got above the 200 DMA, which was approximately April 2nd of 2019, that was when it was pretty much a clear shot all the way through. So something to really keep in mind here um, is that, I mean, tech, check this out. Once Bitcoin was able to get over the 200 DMA, that would have been an excellent time to get in because Bitcoin was under $5,000 and it was basically like a straight up shot after that if you look at it from a percentage gain if you're looking at it from a percentage gain once it got over the 200 dma the increase was about 200 percent so just some interesting correlations to keep in mind there from those two particular charts so that is all i have for you today as always go out there and create a portfolio that you love